What's up guys? I want to show you how to install a proper version of AppSync for iOS 7. Uh, this will help the stability of your phone. Probably a lot of you are using the 25pp AppSync, which was created for, I think, iOS 5. So, and just recoded, basically changed a little bit to support the latest device, or the latest OS's, but... Uh, you find you'll run into a lot of issues where your weather app or something doesn't work after you're installing AppSync. So this is basically what I'm going to show you guys to do. So I'll make sure the link in the description for which source I'm using. Um, so we're actually using the newer version of Cydia here. Uh, so the repo I'm going to add is cydia.angelxwin.net. That's Karen Pineapple, as you'll see here. You can go all packages. Once you add the repo... You'll probably have this AppSync unfiled transition. So that is going to be the AppSync that is installed by, say, if you're using App Addict, that'll probably show us this guy right here. Anyways, what you're going to want to do, if it doesn't show like that, and you are using one of these or a third party repo, say, like Hack Your iPhone. They'll also have one too, but I'm not going to go find it and show it for you because you get my point. I'd probably remove it because there's also another package I'll show you in, the, in a few seconds here that you can use to completely remove it. So if you can do the transition, when you go install, it's also going to give you the app sync transition for iOS 7. And it'll install AppSync unfiled along with it. Now I have this in here, so it's kind of not the best way to show you, but it would do it. Anyways, after you're done, reboot your phone, and you're going to come back into City, and you're going to have... You can remove this. It'll still be installed, so it's not necessary to keep it. Um, anyways, if you had, say, one of these from another repo, and you actually had to manually remove it, I would also suggest going into... And going all the way down here to, sorry, it's actually complete. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, right here. Complete PP sync remover. So this is going to attempt to clean out all traces of the Chinese app sync or 25 PP sync, uh, which has been used quite repeatedly, even by people who say they've rewritten it. And it's actually been the one that's caused a lot of problems broken, so how that you find with jailbroken devices. So do this, reboot your phone, see how it goes. I've noticed a huge difference in just the stability of, say, my weather app. Things work. <laughs> it's raining here in Kelowna right now. Um, and yeah, so that is AppSync Unfiled. Uh, it's a new version of AppSync for iOS 7, so unlike all previous versions, this one was actually rewritten for iOS 7. So it's using Cydia Substraints as well. It doesn't have to patch launch LD, which is a core system file you guys wouldn't understand too much, but it can create instability when you're patching files like that, where Cydia Substraints can basically fall into safe mode to a state where, you know, it can disable it if anything were to go wrong, where if you're using another version and even entering safe mode will still, you know, cause the problem. So you could basically end up losing your jailbreak if you had to restore, if the problem was, you know, too much where you couldn't handle it or couldn't fix it on your own. Anyways, hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, remember to please support your developers and try apps before you buy. I never intend for this video to help 14-year-old kids who don't want to pay for apps or ask their parents. I'm a developer myself. If you uh, can't afford the iOS develop program, then this is a great way to test your apps on your device. If you're like me and you've bought a lot of apps and been burned or really pissed off by you know, spending even 4 to $5 on an app that was completely not worth it, this is a great way to test to make sure your investment. I have a great... Um, full library on iTunes. I've paid a lot of money for my apps, but I make sure that I try before I buy. So until Apple fixes this and creates, say, a 24-hour feature where I could utilize the app or something 
to see if the features are what they actually described as or I'm not going to get ripped off or have the app pulled or, you know, for whatever case that you lose the ability to use it. So for me, it's just been a protection of my investment. The other people look at it in a different way. That's fine. I have spent a lot of money on my stuff, so I'm not here to criticize. I know what it is. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helps a lot of you guys out. Cheers.